So I will do a usual 10 minute introduction for our new viewers. Uh, Jim started channeling about uh, six months ago, six months ago, and uh, we, uh, I was lucky to be contacted by the aliens. Um, we are speaking to Yael Grace, uh, to Pleiadian Aarons, to Pleiadian Blues, to Lyrans, and there was a brief conversation with an Arcturian, there was a brief conversation with an Andromedan. And we have a nice uh, set of conversations, we had a nice set of conversations <coughs> with an angel uh, of, of the third level of the God's realm, and we had a nice conversation, several conversations. They are not very nice, they were pretty tough, but we had intense conversations with uh, an ancient god, which is a human spirit, hu or not human spirit, ditch it out, an ancient god, a group spirit, non-human spirit, nothing, nothing about humans. <coughs> His name is El, E-L, and it was known in many cultures, and um, it was very important, and he had a very important message <coughs> for us. Uh, total, we had about 30, 40 sessions with Jim, and originally they were recorded on audio, and we were transcribing them, and publishing them on our site, humancolony.org. And now we started doing the sessions, uh, videos, so we just can publish them right away. So check our YouTube channels, we have another maybe <coughs> seven, eight videos with uh, channel sessions. Uh, we are lucky to be, uh, to be speaking with a person, a Yael Gray, his name is Dizyakabu Dizduda, shortly Dizdu, who is in charge uh, for the first open contact. Uh, Yael, uh, Yael Grace were selected by others to represent <coughs> the aliens in the first contact. And the reason for that is that they're close to humans. They are our descendants, descendants meaning sons and daughters. They are, have our DNA, recent infusion of human DNA. They were created by Zeta Grays, by, by hybridizing Zeta Gray DNA and human DNA, recent human DNA. So they are our descendants, they are grateful for us giving, uh, giving them their, uh, our DNA and they are very motivated to help us. So that's why they were chosen to represent the aliens, the friendly aliens in the first contact. Uh, so when it is going to happen we don't know, but their plans changing and we are giving them as much advice as they are ready to listen. And you know, only that little can be said in the channel and so we write them electronically they can read electronic <coughs> letters and uh, we publish those letters on our site humancolony.org so there is a lot of ideas which we give them to help the first contact. Um, so the last thing we heard about the timing was for a year from now they were preparing for the first contact and uh, we advised them to to not to force it on humans because it has to be voluntary but Basically, invite humans up there. Invite our celebrities, representatives from United Nations, representatives from governments, from public institutions. But <laughs> our true representatives are our celebrities. So they're really good, good people who are loved by everyone. So inviting them up there and starting to have open contact, talk and learn each other and share the knowledge and things of that sort. So that's, that's the proposal which I actually liked. Uh, because forcing themselves down here would be would be causing a disaster. Everybody understands that. Uh, El, the, uh, the ancient god group spirit, came and gave us a sad news, a very important piece of sad news. According to their plan and creator's plan, the current date for a big disaster, which is economic meltdown, not natural disaster, but economic meltdown, is set for 2027. They say we should expect about two to five months downtime when everything will go down and um, people will just be in the dark, I guess. Uh, everything will be kind of, you know, as, as it happened in the different countries, economic meltdown is pretty disastrous. And they expect <coughs> that about half of the human population will be lost just from local violence. The aliens would prevent the global wars, big wars, 
the aliens are in control of weather and they, they actually can, are capable of uh, minimizing the natural disasters. So they say, you know, by their estimates, next 13, 14 years there is nothing big coming. Small disasters, yes, but nothing uh, terribly big is coming. They can deflect all of that. But, but the economic disaster, uh, the L says, is absolutely necessary. And L is in uh, collaboration with, with the aliens, which will uh, give advice to help preventing that, but, but uh, preventing the loss. But they say the, the economic meltdown is absolutely necessary. So, so we, uh, we had previous days, like 2012, 2001, 1993, 94, where things were predicted to happen. Now we have the next day. And uh, my message is that uh, it's a tentative thing, and we have a, an opportunity to either prevent the big, big, big loss of and suffering of humans and suffering, or uh, at least minimize it. Um, oh, there is much more to say. Yeah, human colonies. Yes, uh, one of the. Uh, first proposal which I propose them is to take us up there and let's talk the up there and uh, that I developed in in many letters which I published as a book and it's available for free to read on on the website humancolony.org and they followed my advice and started <coughs> human colonies up there my idea was that we will come there and uh, and basically broadcast down here what we find out through YouTube and even I think even if a, a report from 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 a, a mothership would be welcomed by any television network, they would be happy to publish it, and it would be actually cost uh, tons of money. So it would be very profitable to sell them. So far, that doesn't didn't happen. But <coughs> but you know the people uh, have been taken, and I was insisted, and they got my message. They now take only the volunteers. They never take people without without full conscious commitment. So first they contact people uh, very boldly, so you can't miss it, and, and invite you up there. And then if you're ready, then uh, if you volunteer to go up there, then, then they take people for a short time. No one is there longer than two weeks at once. But some people, you know, travel back and forth. So far about uh, 190 people have been taken to the colonies, and at, at most there was a little bit over 100 people total in the, in the colonies up there. So, so, so it's a continuous process for about five and a half months. People go up and down, and um, and that's a big achievement. The aliens are talking to humans, talking to volunteers who really want to help the contact and to help the humanity in this way. So we start the website where we invite people to go up there. So far, about 200 people signed up to go, and only two, three people have been taken up uh, as far as, as we know. And uh, we hope that it will take more. Obviously, there, there is a lot of uh, a lot of uh, caution on, on the side of aliens. They don't want to make it too big, so to to avoid premature <coughs> awareness. I mean, they don't want to for the whole human humanity just to become aware that aliens are there, which would cause premature crisis. They, they, they know that you know, premature crisis might, might be very devastating for our survival of, of our species. So they want the contact to be more under control and more positive than negative. So they want humans not to be scared, but to be happy to learn that they have aliens around who are wishing to help. That's, I guess, the main introduction. Mm. Now, uh, Jim will be channeling, part of that would be my private channeling, but part of that would be for, for the public. So then I will cut out the pieces which are private and publish everything on YouTube. So Jim will do meditation right now, and I invited everybody to come through, all our friends, so they will decide what is important. If there are any news, they will tell the news, and we are inviting gods. All right, I turn it back on. So, uh, next question. I guess I'm stuck at the question 2027, what are the ideas, how we can change? I guess one of the ideas around 2027, group meditations, you know, yes. light workers can learn a lot. I don't expect that telepathy will grow huge, but still group meditations and group teachings, you know, teaching the alien aware, teaching the new ideas, teaching the new future, 
you know, that's you know, the main idea. It's consciousness shift, so we have to help all, it with knowledge. All positive connection will be honored. Group meditations and group positive discussion will be helpful in bringing up the awareness of mankind. Thank you. Uh, one part of that was creating universities down on earth and universities up there in the colonies. I'm very disappointed that the flow of uh, volunteers stopped. You know, I hope that it will grow exponentially. Like now we have a uh, couple hundred, couple hundred. Why not to, to grow it to a thousand? Uh, humans can do a lot of work in the colonies, so they can support themselves in many ways. And we need to create universities which will later transfer the knowledge from it's it's two dimension it, in two directional. Humans teach the aliens about human culture, so aliens can research us, and uh, the aliens and humans can can develop the new culture and teach it down down below. So that has to be expanded tremendously to help when, 2027 crisis. Yes, but it is too early to do such a thing. There are, to bring too many to us at. An early date will make problems for both humans and other species at this time. I know you cannot comprehend what I am saying fully, but understand that we must keep a tight control. There are dangers. We will eventually bring more and eventually have permanent status for some humans. Yes, that is another suggestion we, that we should have. We will when the time is appropriate. How about uh, holographic contacts or telepathic contacts with people uh, down below here? Yes, that will happen as well. I feel that we're not doing much we are not doing enough. Uh, for example, I don't think there is much commitment from the aliens. I would love to have the effort on, from, on the alien side to increase tenfold or more. So the colonies could represent humans and invite more aliens to join the effort of helping the Earth. And we down here also we can write open letters and invite. I'm we're inviting right now. Everybody, all friendly aliens who want to help our species are invited to help in uh, every possible positive way. Here. Yeah. Thank you. All right, how about uh, personal thing? I can even turn it off, it would be easier. Do you so I'm asking Nina if she could read some of her poetry, and she's looking up. I have located a s small journal. You are already being recorded. When I visit the waters of disdain, I see the spirals of ships in the distance. How they roll across the waves. How they sound when they hit the water. And then I see the crystallized sands. How they've been pushed into eternity of sea. And how the sea creatures move out from the waters and become land creatures. When I look at the waters of this day, I know that I am part of the universe flowing in and out. I know that I am part of the sand and the sea, and I run my fingers across the waves until I hit the sand. There is distinctness 
variety, disturbance, and otherwise life. When I look upon the seas of this day, I cry for my alien mother, and I weep for my alien father, and I run to my children of choice that are not mine and know that they are caring. And then I laugh because I know that I have much to give and many fathers and many mothers in many senses. When I look upon the waters of disdain, Thank you much. Did you enjoy that? Yes. <clears throat> yes, it has very understandable emotion. It is a more human poem than some of the others. I must go. Now. I appreciate your visit. Uh, come more often, and I wish you a lot of luck and success in my emotions you do. My emotions through this body are very downplayed. I see. Mine too. <laughs> Blessings. Blessings. I am Gahil of the Nine Realms. Gahil, welcome. Uh, it's always uh, much happiness to have you visited. I have a short message. Thank you much. Please let words mean what they are to mean. Your culture has decided words mean little. But words can mean much. And if you use them properly, they can help humanity move forward. Words from ancient times have changed. And words continue to change now. But we need a unification of meanings when we come to words. This may not seem important to you, but to us. When you are praying and use certain words that do not fit into the prayer, it can be confusing. Do you understand? Yes, yes, uh, it's a good message. We bring your prayers to the Most High, the one who is many in one. And he must know unconditionally what you are praying for. Does that make sense? Yes. Therefore, use your words carefully, for they are power. Amen. Amen. Can you stay and answer more questions, or is it good to go? I cannot stay. I appreciate your visit. Much love to you.
Greetings to you, Max. Luckish! Welcome! Yes, thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming through. Uh, it was a, a strange little journey there. There are a lot of entities around today. The morning seems to be filled with them. How are you? I am wonderful. How are the news on your planet? There is uh, much celebration on our planet. Very good. So we continue to celebrate as much as we can. And we continue to learn and be lifted as much as we can. Of course, there is darkness sometimes, but it is underplayed. Oh, nice that you feel good. Yes, I feel very good. Oh, did you, do, do, do you bring any news to tell to the camera? Ah, the camera. Oh, which represents people. Yes, we have about 100 viewers in a couple of days. Ah, oh, very nice, very nice. I wish you all well, and wish you peace and happiness, and that your vibration and that your culture rises with you. And right now, I am... Um, I, I just heard Gahil's message. It was very... It was good for every species, I think. Can you reflect on the idea? Can I reflect on the idea of what he was saying? Yes. Oh, sure, certainly. Uh, our words are sometimes sentences compared to your words. Okay. So, um, we could actually be very easily misconstrued if we use the wrong mm -hmm. tense of the word or wrong inflection of the word because mm -hmm. inflection is very important to our our species language okay so we use a word and it might have four inflections and be different so oh that's so sophisticated no i'm talking about the humans so the hill thinks that if we start using the words more directly... Yes, oh, I can tell you about that. Okay. They get confused about words like um, health. Mm -hmm. Because health can be mental, physical, ex emotional. You must specify what kind of health you're looking for. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. No, I think he was talking about the wrong ideas of religion. Yeah. I think religion kind of confuses you. Oh, yes. You do repentance, you do, you are afraid, you are full of fear, you want to punish uh, non-believers and that I think is much more important than you know specifying that you know I want the health on the right side or left, it doesn't matter in that direction. Okay. You know the angels know which health they are. You know, the do you think they do? Sometimes uh, the pain is The pain is hard to miss. Okay. Yes. I know that for myself and my people that the words and inflections are important in prayers. All right, what else should we discuss? Do you have any personal messages that can turn on the camera? No, oh. I do not have any. I wish to have you know, anything about my financial situation. I do not know anything. L is very quiet these days. Um, but I did, I did hear them speak to someone else recently about finances. And um, they are taking a, a, a different angle toward Earth finances than they did in the past. So oh. I can tell you that. All right. What angle? Hmm? What angle? They're, they are less, they were way, way less personal. But they see that there is a need for certain individuals to succeed. So they will be more personal with I wish some. To, I wish to be called a certain individual. A certain individual. Well, I am sorry. It was a joke. I wanted to succeed. That's what I meant. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I, but I cannot give you more information than that. All right. Uh, we just recently, I recently came through across um, a channel and by joke about Playo. Playo. Playel. Uh, can you share about them? Playel? Yes. Oh, you know we're not about to talk about other people. Oh, really? Well, it's not not without their permission. But I can you ask their permission? Yes.
Yeah, it was Brad Jones. The channel by Brad Jones. What specifically do you want to know? Oh, just introduce. Brad said a few words, but you know, the fair person, are they looking like humans? Yes. If I meet them in a cafeteria, would they be able to tell them apart from humans? Perhaps, yes. On the beach? Yes. So what's different? Um, their demeanor is different. They are much happier. All right, that's you no, know, not uh, not okay. It's you know we have some happy humans as well. But these will be absolutely no negativity on your planet. These beings. Okay. Um, they are humanoid, yes. All right. Bipedal, and they have their eyes are slightly larger. Okay, we have. I, I met a girl on the street which had like huge as possible eyes, so I thought, oh, that should be an alien, but maybe it was a human. It was possibly an alien. Yeah. You don't know. Right. Other than eyes. Um, they have a an accent. Accent. That is different all right, okay. than what you're used to. I have accent, all right. Yes, but uh, they have an accent that would be similar to English, but not English. Oh, okay. um, it would be... Mm, mm, I, I cannot explain. How many of them are walking across uh, among us right now? I do not know the number, Can but they are... Them? Let me ask. They just said many. Uh, Thousands? I don't think specific. Thousands? Specific. Please give specific. The range, you know, something. About about thousand? Between one thousand and fifteen hundred. Hooray! Yes. So the contact is actually happening. We have aliens walking among us. Yes, but they are not contacting you in a way to change your society. Oh, they're not? Mm, not really. They're more... Tourists? Tourists. Welcome. Welcome to the Earth. That's the title of my book, actually. Yes, they are tourists. Welcome to Earth. All right. Yes. Very nice. But some may interact well, and you may learn things from them. Are they sexually attractive? Yes, they can be. Wow. To you. Wow. Welcome to Earth even more. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny, Max. All right. You you would say that, but yet you won't let me experience sex. So, no one wants to do that. But that's okay. Uh, if you want to enter my body, and if you have cash, maybe a couple million, couple million, and I will. Oh, what? cash! I have no cash. Oh, too too bad. Cash, for a couple million I might might let you do that. Oh, cash. Maybe three million. Three mm -hmm. million. Three and a half? Oh, it's getting more and more. <laughs> and they will give you a discount. Yeah, How these, about discount? These humans are very pri- Oh, well, you would know. They are so private. I don't understand this part. I do not understand your privacy. Uh, because are you are who you are in any time, given any place, and that's who you are, no matter what you're doing. So, I do, I do not quite understand. But, yet, that is part of my learning. So, Playel in the Gif Desert are having a base? Yes. And they're developing uh, controls for the flying saucers. Yes. What's their, you know, any, any saucer, or they have particular shape like triangle, or are they triangular ones? No. All right. Any, any shape they want to disclose? They have a shape that is oval. All right. Pass my invitation to Playel to come through gym. It would be fun to talk to them directly. Their, their mechanisms are some parts organic. What, is, what makes Playel proud of their culture? What are they known for? 
their forward thinking uh-huh. in the galaxy as a, and being neighborly as a species. Uh-huh. Um, we have this reputation, but not as much as they. Mm-hmm. They are uh, even more friendly in some ways than we are. All right. And they are spiritually very high-minded. Excellent. Their, their technology takes on a hybrid of electronics and uh, what, what would, would be the word? It would be like a um, physical, oh, what did I use before? It's biological. Of course. Electronic and biological. Yes, we know which, that. Which is the most correct way to say it. We know that. There should be a word And they that. are one of the greatest of users of biology within their technology. Excellent. Are they, so they, seem, they are said to be a second hybrid, second generation hybrids? Yes. Uh, do they have third generation hybrids? They are beginning to. Would, they do exist. What would be their property of the third generation? Where do they move? They would... Where do they move? Move development. Where does the development move? So they They've have, added electronics to the third generation. Makes sense. I welcome that. What, what operation system do they run? That's a joke. Yes. You know, Android? No. <laughs> iPhone, I guess. O- OS, OS. I draw, uh, Where you I, think they are? OS, yes. In your mind, you say Borg or something. But it's Cyborg. But yes, yes, I welcome that. Android, I think, is better. Android is better. Then, you know, than the others. Yes. I do not like some of the terminology. All right, so where are we moving here? Um, Xpotas. I'm familiar with Xpotas. No. I just came across that species. It seems to be negatives involved in our Earth attacks on Earth. There are so many names that your Earthlings give to so many species. You have five names for one species at times. Which species? Um, Pleiadians are, are named differently in different in different contexts and places. All right, it's fine. Right. But Xpodas is not a human word. It sounds very non-human, so yes, it probably is. somebody sounds gave it like to us. But what do they look like? Perhaps they have a different name. I don't know. Oh. Uh, the book I'm reading doesn't give the... At least I'm reading from the middle. How Maybe do you spell that? X-P-O-T-A-Z. Spodas. Never heard that. It is in a book called... Robert Shapir, uh, something about secret government. The title is long, but it was about secret government. Ah, uh, secret government, okay. So basically, secret government was fighting with Xpodas, which sounded like reptilians, but I don't have any more insight. There are so many kinds of names for reptilians as well. So. Let me put an open-ended question. So, we learn about new species all the time. We have Pleiadians, Arcturians, Andromedans, uh, Pleiadians Blue, Pleiadians Aarons, uh, the Yale Greys, Sasani, which are not Sasani, we call them Bashar people, Bashar's people, and now we have Pleiel and Expodus and Zeta Greys, and that's about all I can come up with. Maybe Insectoids, which are not much involved, and Draconians, and that's where I stop. Maybe there are a few others. There's more. Involved. Which ones are important? Tell me who is involved in Earth affairs right now. That's an open-ended question. Okay. The Pleiadians, the Lyrans, the... No, no. Beyond what I mentioned. Oh, beyond what you mentioned? Yes. The, uh... There are... uh, Venusians? There there are... The Venusians are domed... There are domed species. They are... Not involved in Earth affairs. 
Very little. Very little. All right. But they are a domed species on the surface of Venus. It's fine. Um, they also move under the surface of the planet. Makes sense. Uh, but they are not really very involved. They're, they're a... Let's focus on the ones which are most involved. Okay, the that's reptilians. What, the reptilians. There's three or four or five species of reptilians around Earth. Can you name them? Um, with my names, but not with your Earth names. Good, good. With your names. Uh, the Crook. The Crook. Venjik. Venjik. Erebokra. Erebokra. Daike Kronendi. Daike Kronendi, can you repeat? Daike Kronendi. Daike Kronendi. And Zek. Zek. Oh, sophisticated. Okay, which ones were visiting us through Jim? Uh, that was Zek. Zek. And so Zek. And Daiko Krumbundi tried. So Zek is benign? Yes. So they're not. They are observers of your world. So they're welcome to come through Jim again? Would it be harmful for Jim to go? If they, if they give permission, either he can come through, yes. Excellent. And. They said he was benign, so I don't see why he would not be allowed. Excellent. So what other species are involved in any significant numbers? Uh, the Andalusians. Andalusians. I've heard the word but never destroyed them. What are they? Actually, Andalusians are uh, amphibious. The amphibians. What size? About the size of perhaps that object there. Big. Bigger than a human. Yes. Like a beer. Yes. Uh, dolphin size. Yes. Bigger. So, so the, are they two, bipedal? No. How many? But they have, what? they crawl on four. Crawl on four. But they go in and out of the water. Do, eat, do they eat humans? Do they eat humans? Yeah, yeah. No, I do not think that they've ever eaten a human. Okay. But they do eat meat and plant life from their own planets. I understand. But they are circling you in a four-dimensional vehicle. So... Okay. Are they friendly? Contact is hard to make with them. It's hard to tell. Oh. But I think that they are. They have done no damage. Whether they're considering to do damage, I do not know. What's their star? Their star is in the Milky Way. Ha, thank you. Okay. Uh, what else? Which other species are important? Um... Let me think, you named so many. The highest priority. Uh, you did not mention draconians. I did, but okay, draconians are important? No, I was just going through my list. Okay. Martians? Martians do not. The ones under the ocean? Yes. What are they? They are a species of grey. They're the, that are under ocean dwellers, yes. What's the name? What's the type of grey? Uh, they have not been named by your people. Give me another name. The Clares. Clares? Clares. Clares. And the, you know about the Grails. Yes. Can you tell me about both of those? I have no clue what they are. The Clares are violent at times. Violent Grey is impossible. No. They're the ones that are responsible for the animal mutations. The Mutilation. killings, mutilations. We were told that this was necessary for keeping the babies alive, for hybrid babies. Yes, but that's a violent act in my opinion. That's okay, all right. And it was not concerning other life forms.
Jesus. Okay. They could have found a different way to do that. Okay. And the Grails, well, they are a secretive society. Okay. They, they are positively minded, but they want no one to know much about them. All right. They are uh, a gray species as well. Mm -hmm. And they are, do not have any hybridization with Earth at okay. all. Okay. They do have hybridization with another species, but it is Fine. not another Fine. species. This gives them an even more alien look. Okay. Because they're a, a lot more, a little scalier and a little, okay. a little more frightening looking. It's fine. Are they peaceful? Uh, yes, they're very peaceful. But they How are, would they tell apart the grails from others? The grails have more scales. Okay. How tall are they? They're only about four foot two. Oh, what's four the four color of the skin? Gray. Okay. Oh, yes to silver gray to, in fact, there are some very dark gray, almost black okay. grails. Nose and mouth do they have? Yes. Very small mouth, of course, telepathic. Ears? No ears, but places, indentations, okay. and spaces for where they evolved from ears. Okay. The shape of the skull? Is almost triangular. Triangle like? Like this. Okay. Uh, protruding backwards? Protruding backwards. How about the forehead? Protruding forward as well. Okay. Looks familiar. Uh, now, uh, yes. was it the one which was on the ancient photograph? Uh, it, 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 it's about the description. There was a general Eisenhower or some other American official and someone which looks like you described a grail. Was it a grail? It could have been possibly a grail. I don't know this. I have to show it to Jim and then you would know. Yes. It's, it's all on the internet. Yes. I am not familiar with all the names of your presidents. Whatever. Uh, Is he a president actually that you just named? Eisenhower was a president. Oh, okay. That's what I assumed. I, I yes. got that. Yeah, got that feeling. But I'm not sure if it was on a, on a photograph. But the alien is visible, so I can show it to Jim. And oh, it will be interesting. So interesting. we'll have a, you know, a photograph of the alien, which is not frequent we have. We don't have any of that. Oh, not many of them. Um, oh. Next question is, um, what, what, what their mission here? They don't tell, right? How many of them are out? Um, they're secretive, so they can hide. Mm -hmm. So I do not know, really, how many there are. Okay. I don't know if they even have a mission. They may just be here to watch. They may be here to watch. Okay, the Claire Grays, how many are there? The Claire's, thousand, about a thousand, about under the thousand. Pacific Ocean at the bottom. Are they, uh, what are they doing there? Anybody knows? They're, they're exper experimenting and studying Earth, uh, science underwater, the species down in the bottom are ancient mm -hmm. and they are learning about the ancient past and makeup of earth biology. Sounds good. Are they, are they the ones who are interested in stealing our uh, core of the earth? They do have interest in the core of the earth, yes. Ah, how would they use it? It is an energy source. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This could be an energy source for them to be benevolent or malevolent. Okay. But we, but we do not know recently what they are up to. Okay, so who because is... Because the last thing they have done was the mutilation of the bovine species. Right, right. Are they involved in hybridization program? No. So they did mutilations, but they didn't use the uh, fluids which is sucked out of the core. What, what did they use it for? You were correct. They used it for their children. Their children? Yes, but it's not a hybridization. They used it for something different. Bashar said that bovine fluids were used for hybridization program. Maybe there were multiple species who did that? There were... 
I would not know how he would know that, but he, uh, they're bovine parts that were used were mm -hmm. actually for food yes. for the children, mm -hmm. but not hybridization. Okay. So we have conflicting things, but they're kind of pointing in the same direction, just a little bit conflicting, not big. Yeah. At least I am not aware of any hybridization uses. Okay. Usages. Yes. Yes. There, he could know something that I do not. Do you have a new poem to read? Uh, I do not have any new ones as of today. No, no, not new written, but something new to read. Ah, uh, let me check. Zurutura kararandi potaroto sorto kukwa. So the tipi. Yiki te bato. Ora karasha shota. Uta te 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 you can't translate that, right? Okay. The wee ones, the little ones, the children of our face, our mind, our body. We liken you to little animals that grow up into large dreams. And we know you as pets, but greater than pets. We love you much. Why was high voice and a low voice? What was the, what was that? I'm just trying to be dramatic. Oh. <laughs> Can you repeat the first two lines? Because there was I couldn't understand the words. Can you just pronounce first two lines again? A little... Are, of what? Of the poem. In, are there ones? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, was it face or something else? Okay. Fine. Yes, face. Face, all right. All right, I need a consultation on my... I, uh, business ideas. So I'll turn on the camera and I'll talk to you off okay. off off camera. Bye bye. Here. Ukute soto botar o to tipo sedi. Kuta tata sedita. Taradoto. Thank you. What was that? It was speaking to some others. Blues? No. How would they understand your language? I spoke to them in their own language some. What does that mean? Leave. What does that mean? Running. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. So, um, did, you, did you find anything interesting? I, I discovered why there are so many here. Why? There is much, there's an energy vortex here in this room. Hmm. Right here? Yes. I feel some. Mm -hmm. Let me compare. It is because there was so much Reiki done right here. I understand. Um, and so they were drawn not only to the channeling session and to your 
present, okay. but also to the energy vortex. So, what were the beings? There was one blue, but there was also a, a Pleiadian and a, two reptilians. Oh, are they gone? No. Hey guys, please don't mess up with Jim's health. But Be they careful. are interfering with my research. So that's what I was talking to. Yes. Um, um, I don't mind them being present, but please be nice to Lakesh and Jim and me. Uh, I came up with a new ideas, new questions. Uh, so I watched the, on YouTube there is a monthly update of people who videotaped the video recorded the saucers, different uh, alien ship, alien crafts. And they're of different shapes. So one of them is a nice shape, but it's kind of always changing the shape. It's like silver and always kind of going in and out and changing the shape. What, what could be the species which does that? Wait, could you say that again? I will. Where do I start? The, there is a video recording of a craft that changes the oh, shape. Oh, yes, it changes shape. And goes in and out and kind of, how does it work? Mm -hmm. Kind of inside out, inside out, bigger, smaller. Mm -hmm. Yes. What would be the species? Um, let me look. There are, there are very high species. They're a relative of the Arcturians, actually. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. give their name. Okay. A star? Hmm? A star? A star? Oh, could they give it a star? Oh, where they're from? A star? Yes. Yeah, a star, yes. A red dwarf star. No name? No name. Red Con dwarf star. Constellation? In the Orion constellation. Okay. Now, uh, the classical saucers about big saucers with flashing lights, red and uh, white, kind of going in circles. Mm -hmm. What would be that? That was an early Pleiadian vessel that looked like that. Early Pleiadian. Pretty big ones, like, I would say... Yes, they're tall. Yeah, they're no, no, big. not Pleiadian, they're, they're vessels. Pretty uh, big ones. Oh yeah. yes, they're very big. All right, now uh, the huge ships which are a mile long, which could go above the Earth, what are, the, what are those? There are several different species that have mile long ships. What are those species? Arcturians have mile to three mile long ships. Okay. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh has mile long ships as well. Okay. Uh, Pleiadians now have ships that can be a mile long. Lyrans, not quite a mile. Uh, well, actually... Now Lyrans have made a five mile long one, so... Now, the ones which look like a big bar with few lights, like maybe three or four lights, mm -hmm. and a big, maybe also huge, like cylinders, mm -hmm. silvery cylinders. Mm -hmm. uh, a species that's amphibious, it's filled with water, ah. or <laughs> filled with liquid, I should say, not, well, some water in there, but not all water. All right, now the ones which look like huge orbs of size of maybe 5, 10 meters, even 15 meters, and they go in arrangements, they kind of light orbs go pretty high, but sometimes they go on the level of the clouds, and they go in arrangements between three, and sometimes it's even a hundred of those, and they go slowly, everybody can see them, they flew over Moscow, and I think it was somewhere in South America, was lots of them, what are those? Um, hmm? They're very well known. They, you know, you can see them in the space, but mostly you can see them in, in South America. It was like a month when they just flew. Yes. Everybody was, was able to. That's see. a reptilian. A reptilian mm -hmm. in that number. Mm -hmm. So, is it each of those? Is it a ship or what? Yes, those are ships. Oh. Reptilians. Yes. 
So many of them. There was a lot of reptilians. So what did they demonstrate? If you have to go, you're, you're... they demonstrate that they are not afraid. I thought there's a friend there. Are they friendly or the bad ones? Those ones that are very popular were not friendly. So those ones in big numbers in Brazil were not. But friendly. they were stopped from being harmful. Not friendly, but not harmful. Either. They were stopped from being harmful. Okay. By who? I do have to go. I appreciate your visit. A lot of interesting information. And thank you for the poem. It was wonderful. It was a child poem. Yes. Thank you. Always happy to have you around. Hey Jim. Hi. Thank you much for your um, mm. channeling. Mm. It was good. Lakesh was good. Everybody was excellent. Mm. And the hill visited. It was very nice. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry too. <laughs> Do you want to say anything in there? I guess. So let me introduce people who spoke. Uh, Nina. Actually, I ask you to introduce yourself. She is. Uh, I guess I should, should say that. Yeah, she is my daughter, a hybrid daughter of me and my wife. And she has some gray DNA and Pleiadian DNA. So I guess I might, uh, yeah, that, that, would be, that would go public. I never met her. I wish very much to meet her, but uh, I spoke to her through Jim and she is very real for me. Uh, and she is in charge of the three colonies at the moment. Uh, we should made the progress from uh, being just a hybrid to visiting the colonies to becoming a leader of one and so on. She is uh, very graceful as I can as you can see and uh, very very positive. Um, Gahil is our friend Angel and he's huge and he's androgynous. They are androgynous, meaning male female at the same time. They are not from dimensions. They are outside of our dimension. They are from God's realm. Uh, you can uh, compare them to network administrators. They are outside and in control of the whole experiment. Not only Earth experiment, the whole experiment, the whole universe experiment. They are outside, sent by God as, uh, as helpers to whatever needs to be done. So they are helping from outside, from the spiritual God's realm. Um, and Lakesh is a blue Pleiadian. They have three planets and they don't tell the names of the planets or the star where from they are, but he is our old friend and he has very human personality, although he doesn't look very human. He is a humanoid, but uh, looks like, as he describes, more translucent, transparent blue gingerbread man about four or five feet tall. And they're not going anywhere from their anywhere from their planets. They, he's on his planet, just sending the, you know, linking telepathically or spiritually with Jim and going into Jim's body and several more bodies of other channelers on Earth. Um, and one of the reasons he is here to experience things, and another reason research, and another reason to help. And he's a nice guy, and mm -hmm. sometimes he has very human, uh, how do you say? weak qualities like being uh, too easy to flutter or too uh, too proud or too afraid or not enough self-confidence. So he has all this interesting human qualities, although he is not very much like human. And uh, it doesn't look like we will meet with them anytime soon, but uh, uh, the Blues are very friendly and uh, helpful to others, but they are neutral. They are like our Switzerland, they never get into any, any alliances and uh, uh, being guarded basically by others. I don't think they even have the, the military powers. Uh, they, the other Pleiadians, I think, are taking care of the safety of these blue Pleiadians. So I guess it's a nice introduction. Uh, 
obviously we learn more and there is lots more to learn please visit our site uh, Jim is now accepting um, the how they call the orders no we don't call them orders he provided the service of individual channeling sessions for about forty dollars half an hour through video through Skype or video Skype so so contact Jim or me and uh, we'll arrange that we are open to being to visiting other cities to driving or flying to other places and doing the sessions there public sessions there um, and uh, please join our site humancolony.org and watch other videos there is about eight more video sessions which were recorded on uh, which were recorded and uh, you can watch that uh, now we're doing them pretty frequently come over again and watch more uh, Thank you very much for your attention. Anything else we want to say? No, I'm good. So blessings to you. I guess we'll finish with our traditional Om meditation. So Om is just one of the names of God, one of the sounds of God, which allows us to synchronize with you and with others and send you our blessings and our healing. So we'll send you healing. Any specific cause we want to send it to? Well. I just wanted to say the OM also meshes us together as one. We become the same vibration and we can lift each other up that way because it all comes together as an OM. And let's, I just want to send it out to anyone who's not feeling well that watches the video. Right. Okay. So we send you healing. Healing for those who don't feel well. OM with us if you're watching the video. And it's still powerful because the vibration is still there. Do you understand yes. that? That's and the fact that you're watching it later doesn't matter. We can live and we, through that. And it can energize you and lift you up. So. And our intention is pure. We just send it here. Yes, pure intention. Make sure your intention is pure, even for yourself. So.